good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Josh and it is an honor, a blessing and a joy to have all of you joining with us um, from wherever it is that you are. As we start our time this morning, I invite you to uh, please pray with me. God, we thank you for this day, even as we are in the midst of uncertain times and more restrictions being placed on us and and all of that, God, we we still come to you in in joy, despite our our worldly things going on. We we know God that the the spiritual realm is so much deeper than that. We we still are thankful that we have have plenty of opportunities, and most of all, we're thankful that we have the opportunity to to gather and worship you, even though we're apart. We pray, God, that you'd send your spirit to be with us in each one of our homes, in each one of our, our rooms, wherever it is that we are. We ask, God, that your Holy Spirit would be with us as we, as we join our, our spirits, our individual spirits together in one, in unity to, to worship you this day. We pray, God, that everything we say, think, feel, and do would be honoring and pleasing to you. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for this time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As always, thanks to Cheryl Jessica for, for playing the piano for us. She's such a, a talented musician, and we are honored to have her be able to share her talent with us. And we will um, try to get more of that in the, the weeks to come as we're um, doing these online services. So thank you, Cheryl, for, for doing that for us. All right, so this morning, 
We're on our third and, and our final week in the, the stress-free series. And in this series, the last couple weeks, we've been looking at biblical principles that, um, that lead us to becoming um, stress-free or having less stress with our, our finances. You know, Jesus came into the world so that we could experience life to the, the full. And, and experiencing life to the full, it includes having peace with, with our money. But for most people, finances are one of the most frustrating areas of of our life. Most people don't experience peace with their money. They experience a lot of stress and it doesn't matter if you have a lot of money or if you have a little money. Most people, regardless of income level, experience lots of stress with their money. And that's why this series is so important to us. You see, for us to experience the, the abundant life that God promises us, we, we have to learn to be wise with our resources. We started this series a couple weeks ago. If you think back a couple weeks ago, we started the series by looking at how to have less stress about spending money. And to do that, we to have less stress spending money, we, we looked at the, the parable of the rich fool in Luke chapter 12. And in this parable, Jesus warns us here to, to be careful with money. He then tells us to, to be on guard against all kinds of greed, he said. Instead of being greedy, the Bible tells us to use wisdom when, when it comes to spending. We, we talked about that 10, 10, 80 plan. You'll remember we talked about that. 10% to the church, 10% savings, 80% for us. And if we stick to that plan, that eliminates so much of the stress that we have with spending money because what it does is, is it introduces God's blessing over all of our finances and it, it allows us to even build up a little bit of, of reserves. Then last week, we, we looked at um, how to have less stress with managing our money and two biblical principles that, that empower us to manage our finances with, with, with less stress are to save wisely and avoiding foolish debt. And you know we do that so that we don't live in, in bondage of every paycheck already being committed, right? Because of, of past debts. We, we don't wanna be in bondage to, to all of that, to, to debts. We don't wanna live in slavery to that. You know, there's no freedom in that. And, and that's, not, that's not how God wants us to live. So today, I'm gonna to talk a, a little bit about having less stress about giving money. Now, this is probably gonna be the toughest of, of these three messages for some people to hear because I'm gonna address this morning head on the, the issue of giving, and I'm gonna address it head on going about 60 miles an hour. But if, if you stick with me to the end, and I encourage you, please don't tune out now, um, stick with me to the end. And if you do that, I think, and I hope and I pray that you'll understand why this topic is so important for us. You know, one of the best ways to, to experience less stress is by having our finances under, under God's blessing. And one of the surest ways to make that happen is, of course, by giving back to God a tenth of what God's entrusted to us. So with that, all of that as an intro to the, the scripture reading, I'm not even preaching yet. All that was just a, a recap and an intro into the scripture reading. So with all of that being the intro, let's read Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 to 12. And you're going to be familiar with these because I've touched on these verses because I've touched on them the last, the last few weeks. So Malachi was a prophet in the Old Testament and, and he came and there was all kinds of stuff that was being broken, rules that, and covenants that were being twisted and, and bent around. And he came as a prophet and a prophet is one who, who speaks on behalf of, of God, who, who gives this prophetic word. And this is what Malachi says. Malachi chapter, chapter 3, beginning with verse 8, said, Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But, you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. 
I will prevent the pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. God, we thank you for the words spoken to us through your prophet Malachi. We, we pray, God, that as we hear your word proclaimed to us this morning, that you would open our hearts, open our spirits, and open our minds to hear you speaking to each one of us. I ask God that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So just a little bit of, of kind of context to what's going on here. So hundreds of years prior to Malachi writing this text or speaking these words, God, God had spelled out to for his people, how they were supposed to handle their money. That was hundreds of years earlier. So God had spelled out how to the people, how they were to handle their money. God said, <clears throat> he was saying, here's the guidelines. Here's the guidelines. He said, earn money ethically. No schemes, no, no corruption, no, no kind of under the table or shady deals, no gray areas. He said, you can earn a lot of money. God said, if you want, you can earn a lot of money. Just earn it ethically. Spend money wisely, not foolishly or, or carelessly. Avoid destructive debt. Save money consistently for, for your future. Give money to the poor. And, and as part of God's overall money management principles, the, the Lord says, I'm establishing the practice of, of percentage giving. Now, the text in Malachi, it, it makes it clear that, that God expects his people to give back to him 10% of their income. The word tithe means a tenth. So a tithe is a tenth. That's what tithe means. The idea behind this practice of tithing was that God's people would take 10% of, of whatever they made, they would bring it into the place of worship, as a symbol of their gratefulness to God. And then as a, as a secondary purpose, this percentage, so this 10% that they were giving in, you know, uh, so first of all, they're showing their gratefulness to God. Secondary purpose of this, this 10% was, was a means of supporting the, the ministry of their worship center, of the temple or synagogue. And for a long time, and for a long time, the, the people, they carried out all of these guidelines. They, they managed their money well, and, and they kept their finances under, under control. They, they stayed out of, of destructive debt. They saved wisely. They, they helped the poor. They gave money to the poor. And, and they brought in the full 10%, and, and God was honored. God was honored because of that, because his graciousness and, and the ministry in, in the temple, they were adequately... Um, Funded. They were resourced well. But then, fast forward, comes Malachi's day. Malachi's day, the, the standards of financial excellence had, had fallen. They had plummeted. They, in spite of being taught how, how to honor God with their resources, people, they, they started making dishonoring financial choices and decisions. They, they started to make up their own rules. And, and some people, they decided to, to make up for, for their own financial foolishness and irresponsibility by, by holding back 10, the 10% that was supposed to go to God. So they were making up for their own um, irresponsibility or foolishness. So, for example, um, in Malachi's day, um, somebody might have, have gone to the, the local market to maybe pick out a, a, a few things. And you can put this into our, our context if you want. You know, you go to the grocery store, pick up a few things. So Malachi's day, they'd go to a market, they'd, they'd uh, pick up a few things. Maybe they got carried away with spending a little bit. They saw um, uh, uh, the figs, I don't know if they had figs, but the figs looked really good and the olives looked, looked great and, and they bought more than what they maybe needed. They spent more on those figs and those olives than, than what they needed or the, the frankincense oil. I don't know what they're spending it on, but they overspend their budget at the, the local market. And on the way home, they realize that and they say, man, I, I maybe spent a little bit more. And 
I'll just take that percentage that I was supposed to give to God for this week, and, and I'll just use that to balance my budget, problem solved. So they withhold that. Then, then maybe they think, well, I wonder what God is going to think about that. You know, it's not a big deal. Maybe someone else, Malachi's day, maybe they started building a new house, and they keep on adding all of these extras and until the only way that they could afford afford that house would be to, to take a whole year of their percentage giving, their 10%, for the whole year and use that money to finish their house. Maybe other people would, would experience a financial hardship of, of some kind, maybe a loss of, of employment. And, and rather than draw down their savings while they were, were looking for a, a new job, they say, oh, I'll just stop giving to God. Stop bringing that 10% to God. God will understand. Maybe someone had a, a great crop year and maybe they sold a piece of land or a piece of property that had, had really increased in, in value. They, they make a ton of money, ton of money on that. And then, then when they figured out how much 10% of that was, that ton of money that they just got, they'd say, man, there's no way, no way that I'm putting that in the offering next week. It's too much even though it's only 10% of, of what they had gotten. See, in Malachi's day, the, the financial standards of excellence had tanked. They had tanked. Almost everyone had their excuses for giving less to God's purposes than the full 10% of their earnings. That, of course, is Malachi's day, right? That doesn't happen in 2020. But then enter God's spokesperson, Malachi, to all those people who are making all these excuses for why they're not giving the 10%, why, they're, why the, the standards of excellence had, had gone down. Enter God's spokesperson, Malachi, the prophet, who is going to reset this bar. So Malachi starts the, the conversation by, by implying to, to the people he doesn't say this. It's kind of me reading what Malachi would be implying. He'd say, how do you feel about getting robbed? You know, pretty bad, right? You'd feel pretty bad about getting robbed. And you should. It's a terrible, terrible thing when someone robs someone else. Would you ever rob your neighbor? Or your friend? Would you ever rob them? Well, obviously, the people said, no, of course not. We would never rob anybody. And then it's at that point that, that Malachi sees the, the opportunity for a, a teachable moment. And that's kind of right where we, we picked it up. So he, he talks about, you know, well, a mere mortal rob God, yet you rob, you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings, you're under a curse, your whole nation, because you're robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. So that's kind of the beginning. That's, that's Malachi's teachable moment. And what Malachi is saying is, is, you're right. You don't rob your neighbors. At least I hope you're not robbing your neighbors and your friends. You don't do that. But here's the thing. If you wouldn't rob them, then why in the world would you rob the God that you say you love and serve? If you have the, the common decency, Malachi is saying, not to rob your neighbors and your friends, what in the world would possess you to rob God of what he asks you to give on a regular basis to honor him? Every time you offer less than the full 10% of your earnings, you are robbing the one who gave his best for you. What you're doing, Malachi is saying, is unthinkable and it has to stop. In not so many words, that's what Malachi is saying. What you're doing is unthinkable and it has to stop. So essentially, Malachi is saying giving 10% is not just an accounting thing. It's not just about accounting, it's not an impersonal thing. You are God's children, Malachi says. He is your heavenly father. All God has ever done is give to you. All God has ever done is give to you. And all, all that he asks of you is to take a tenth, 
to take a tithe out of everything that he allows you to earn, right? Because God allows you to earn it. Malachi is just saying, all he wants of you, because all God has done is give to you. All he's asking in return is that you give a tithe of everything that he allows you to earn and return it as a worship offering. You are God's children and you would steal from him? That's unthinkable, Malachi says. And see, we have to start doing things God's way. We have to do it God's way. Now, I want us to notice several things in, in this text in Malachi. There's a lot here. I'm just going to point out a, a few. First, if you notice in verse 10, chapter 3, verse 10 of Malachi, verse 10 says to bring the whole tithe. Bring the whole tithe. Now, I often hear, I often hear people call their giving to the church tithing. Giving to the church as tithing, even though I know that they're not giving a full 10%. You know, I, I know that when you give a, a check to the church for $10, I know that you didn't only make 100 bucks that week. I, I mean, let's be real. I know that. So $10 is not a tithe. I think it's important that we, that we keep our, our terminology clear. God tells us in Malachi 3.10 to bring the whole tithe. That's the full 10%. Anything less than 10% is an offering, but it's not a tithe. Anything above 10% then would be a gift. So, you know, you, you give a gift. A gift is freely giving. A gift is not what's required. A gift is above and beyond. So that's why, for those of you who, who uh, attend Cornerstone in person back, you know, if you can remember back in the day when we used to pass the, the plates through the, the pews, you know, it seems so long ago that we've been able to actually pass the pew or pass the, the plates. But then, you know, whenever I do the, the prayer dedication, the prayer where we are offering these, these um, the, the, what we've just given um, and put in the plates, I always pray and I said, God, take these gifts, tithes and offerings. I'm asking God to bless it, even if we're not giving the full tithe, even if we're not giving the, the full 10%, because there are offerings, there are tithes, and then there are gifts. But we do want God to bless all of that. So if you give and it's not the full tithe, I encourage you to step up and do that, but know that that's not a tithe, that is an offering. Offering is less than 10%. 10% what God uh, asks is a tithe. And anything above 10% is a gift. So it's important that we keep that terminology um, clear and, and the same. So we're all on the same page. So a tithe is 10%. A gift is more than 10%. An offering is less than 10%. Notice also in this, um, in this, this passage that the 10%, the tithe, is brought into the storehouse. Now, Jewish society was, was agricultural. People, they brought 10% of their, their harvest or, or their herds, and they, they brought the 10% in. They brought these to the, to the temple where, where they were stored. Now, if we apply this, this idea or this principle today, applying that to today means that we are to bring 10% of our income to our local church. Now, it's good if we give to other places, but the 10% that God is, is calling us to give is to our local church. And that accomplishes two things. Um, one, it honors God. And then it also provides resources for the, for the local church to accomplish its, its mission. Missions require resources. And the last thing to notice is, is that the Lord says in verse 10, Test me in this. Test me in this. See if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. This is the only place in Scripture, again, I'm going to repeat this. I've said it the last two weeks. This is the only place in Scripture where God tells us to test Him. The only place. In every other area, we are specifically prohibited from testing God. But in regard to giving 10% of our earnings, God says to test Him. And watch for the blessings that follow. This is why this principle is so vital 
for us to be stress-free with our finances. Giving 10% of our income to advance the cause of Christ, it places our finances under the umbrella of God's blessing. And something special happens when we obey God, not just with our finances, but in every area of our life, but we're talking about finances. And when we obey God, something special happens. That's why when, when people tell me that they can't afford to give 10% to God's work, my response is always, you can't afford not to do this. The promise in Malachi 3.10 is amazing. If we give 10% to advance God's purposes, the Lord will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that we won't have enough room for it. God promises that. Now, I know that there are some of you, some of you are thinking, um, but Pastor Josh, this is Old Testament stuff. We live under the new covenant. That's the Old Testament. That's the old covenant. That promise doesn't apply to us to today. Well, if you're thinking that, let me just, let me just uh, say this. Jesus actually made that very same promise in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Jesus made that same promise. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured out in your lap. Sounds kind of similar to what Malachi said, doesn't it? That promise from Jesus is almost identical to the one in Malachi. When, when we give to advance God's purposes, something very, very special happens. And our finances come under God's blessing. So if you want to have less stress with your money, one of the best places to start is to start by giving God the full 10% so that your finances are under that blessing that God promises. But to do that requires courageous faith. I get that. It requires courageous faith. But what it all boils down to is this. Jesus Christ should be honored no matter how much it costs. That's what it boils down to. That Jesus Christ should be honored no matter how much it costs. See, God has always been giving to us. God gave his very best. We ought to at least do the minimum that God asks of us. Doesn't that make sense? To do the very minimum that God asks. You know, if Malachi stood before all of us today, if he stood before this church today, he'd say, how do you look at the cross? How do you look at the, the cross where Jesus Christ himself was hung, bled and died? How do you look at that, that blood-stained cross? How do you look at the empty tomb? How do you look at the rock-solid promise of a home in heaven? All things that God has promised you. And then whine and complain over giving 10% of what God has made it possible for you to make in the first place. Jesus said there's always a clear winner in the, the God versus money battle. There's always a clear winner. No one can serve two masters. One will always win, Jesus says, God or money. Malachi's question to you is this. Who's the winner in the God versus money battle that rages in your heart? Who's the winner? Is what Malachi would be asking. Who's the winner in that God versus money battle that rages in your heart? I hope you can see that giving 10%, it calls out the true winner of the God versus money battle in our lives. It calls that out. Proverbs 3, 9 says, Honor the Lord with the first fruits of your harvest. See, when farmers brought 10% of their produce to God, they took it from the first harvest, symbolically saying, God, you're first. They took it out of the first money that they had to say, God, you're first. Following God 
um, following um, God and, and, and this principle, many of us have, have made the, the practice of making, the, making our, our 10% check, the very first check that, that we write every pay period, every time we get, get paid, 10% of that goes to the church. That requires commitment. It, it really does. Giving 10%, it doesn't happen by, by accident. But every time we do it, every time we're giving 10%, we're responding to that heart check. We're saying, God, you're number one in my life. You're number one in my life. Let's pray. God, we, we are all challenged by this, this message. Even those who may give 10%. Or above and beyond 10%. It's still hard. It's still a challenge to, to honor you in that way. For some of us who, who need to step it up a little bit and, and grow into the giving of the full tithe, I pray God that you would give us the courage to, to honor you by saying, God, you are first in my life. You made this promise to me, God, that if I, honor you by bringing in the full tithe, the full 10%. You made that promise, God, that you would pour out your blessing on us. I pray, God, that you'd give us the courage to step up to, the, to honoring you with the, the full 10%, which is the minimum that you've asked of us. Give us the courage to do that. And God, we we thank you for everything that you have blessed us with. We thank you for all that you have given to us. And we seek God to honor you. Help us to honor you, not just with our, our lives, but help us also to honor you with our finances. It's been a challenging message. It's been a challenging series. But we know that there's so much wisdom in the Bible that, that you have taught us how to be stress-free with our finances. We pray this in all things in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
As you go forth, go forth in, in peace. Be blessed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. We will see you next week. God bless.